take a look around you. Not here, or probably not where you're sitting right now, but when you go to an urban area, when you're surrounded by vehicles, and just notice how many crossovers and SUVs are out there. This becomes the bread and butter for manufacturers. They want the high volume. They want the standout vehicle. And in this case, Nissan has kind of just tried to turn this vehicle more upscale, more mature. And you can see that in the implementation of so many different things here, from just the overall lines of the vehicle, this aggressive swooping shape, these chrome accents. Now, obviously, this is targeted to a certain market, so maybe the younger market won't like all that, but for the most part, this is just different for Nissan. Now, they haven't gone off the deep end here because you come around to the front of this vehicle and it's very mainstream looking. Now, yes, every manufacturer has a marketing team that will tell you in words how it's so different. In this case, they have this boomerang style headlight and front grille. But the thing is, is you know, it's non-offensive, but it's not very unique either. So it's, it's trying to capture that balance between being edgy and safe at the same time, if that even makes sense. Now, the story changes when you come to the back of the Murano. This rear quarter is one of my favorite parts of this vehicle. You can tell a lot of the styling and design effort was spent back here. It's uniquely Nissan, but I, I can pretty much bet you, if you did this and covered up the badge here, most people would think it's a luxury brand. That's how nice it looks. Now, the other area that they've spent a lot of energy on is smoothing out the airflow around, above, and underneath of the Murano. So it reduces the drag coefficient. The point was is they need better fuel efficiency here. And so a lot of these smooth lines, a lot of the way that this car flows isn't just for looks. With modern vehicle design, uh, it's very subjective. Specifically with cars like this, I have to see it in person. You just can't appreciate some of the design elements until you see it in different light. But also, when you get physical with the vehicle, you start to see some of the flaws. And in the case of this Murano, I don't know if it's a manufacturing defect or if the vehicle was hit, but there's a ton of panel gaps, specifically in the hood. And it almost looks like the hood is open on this car. And there's other panels and gaps here that look very similar to that. So that's something to note. How you doing tonight, Scott? <laughs> I, I could be better. Why? Because you didn't bring me that convertible you promised. Which one? Murano. I lied to Scott. To get him to do this video tonight, I told him I was bringing the Murano convertible, which he's essentially... I lust for that car. <laughs> so now what do I have to give up since I lied to you? 94 Caravan? Okay. Your camera equipment hauler? Yeah, I'm going to have to give him this beauty. I also am going to have to sign the pink over to the LHS, the PT Cruiser convertible, and my 2001 Solara convertible. I can't. It's a good knife for that Solara convertible. Oh, yeah. Where would you go? Probably to some drive through get some ice cream. Ooh. <laughs> so this is not the convertible. This is the 2015 Nissan Murano. Platinum. Platinum edition. So what do we get here? 3.5 liters of V6 power. Yes. With a CVT and all-wheel drive. Yeah, that's a that's pretty much sums it up here. Now the only really, the only thing really to note here is the fact that this is not a true truck platform. You're not going to be doing any hardcore towing with this. I think the the max capacity is 1,500 pounds, and with a CVT, I don't think you'd want to even approach that. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, but anyway, this, that's not, it's not designed to be a truck or to tow. Uh, it is a crossover. It's to get your wife to the grocery store in the snow so she can go get you some beer. What else? That's about it. I like when my wife goes to the store and she gets me... Chocolate peanut butter ice cream. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Scott... Uh, as we look at this vehicle, this is a strut-based front suspension, but what's really nice here compared to plenty of the competition, there is aluminum pretty much everything in this front suspension. Uh, Even an aluminum sway bar link. Yes. I mean, obviously, the strut assembly, the strut itself is not aluminum, but... Those are coming. Night version 2.0. Those are the Nismo dampers. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> As we look along here, there's some attempts at underbody aero, of course, in the front. But as we come towards the middle, that kind of disappears, obviously, because we have a monster drive shaft that runs along the middle of the car. 
but there is attempts here at aerodynamics. Scott, we're in the back of the Murano for about the 10th time here. Uh, what do you think? It's got some aluminum knuckles and upper control arms and calipers. Why would they do that? Save weight. That's good to see here, actually. There's some cars we don't see that are more money than this that mm -hmm. add. A lot of cars. Yeah. It has one of your favorite parts in the rear end, some adjustable camber. I like that. I like when car companies put adjustable alignment. <clears throat> what else we got, Scott? Some a dual spout exhaust. But at least when one side goes bad on this one, just replace the rear muffler instead of half the freaking exhaust for $1,000. That was smart, actually. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot more sense. We're under the hood of the uh, Murano, Scott. You're still not interested, are you? No, it doesn't have convertible. What's with you and the rag tops? They're tough. I feel my hair blowing through the wind. It's easier when I reach into the drive through and just set it right into it. Let's just pretend it's a convertible for a minute and you tell me about this V6. It looks like the same V6 I've seen for the past 15 years. No. Which not. is good. It works. Keep it. These well, are it's, pretty reliable. It's got different stuff on it, like variable solenoids and nonsense like that, but I'm sure it's 90% still the same. That's Even the dipstick tube is forged. <sighs> That's why they have to indicate don't pull it out when you're putting oil in it. Now sure. you're trying to get a quick oil change. Sure, come on in. Let me put oil in it, check your dipstick. Oh, give me a half hour before I can read it. Oh, that's because you were saying it goes through the block. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that slight annoyance, these are pretty solid motors. You mm -hmm. don't hear too much nonsense about this. Nope. Although, on a well, it was a 3.5, but they didn't change the oil about every 20,000 miles. We did have to do a timing chain on it, but that's neglect. And a Nissan Quest, doing a timing chain in the car was not fun. Well, the good thing is, chances are, from a, at least a motor perspective, somebody's not likely to have too many issues with this. These are pretty much tried and true. When I first got into the Murano, I thought to myself, this thing is extremely comfortable, but I kind of wondered how it would be after you throw some miles at it. So after about five, 600 miles, I am still feeling the same way I did from day one. This is extremely comfortable. In fact, I don't have much to complain about in terms of ride quality for the price. It's pretty quiet. Uh, it's pretty well dampened. No, it doesn't have that luxury SUV or crossover feel, but it's pretty damn good. And not only that is it maintains a little bit of sportiness in the steering that you don't feel like you're driving a totally huge vehicle until you start driving like a maniac. And then, you know, the weight kicks in, the weight transfer kicks in. But overall, the people that are going to be driving this in an urban, suburban setting are going to be super happy with it. The Murano is not about performance. No one that's going to buy this is going to drive it like a maniac. But let's go into manual mode, turn off traction control. Uh, you can't, there's no paddle shift there is in here, so you can manually control the CVT from the console here. So check this out. The, the one thing that's really good about the Murano is the steering is so car-like. It's really fast to respond. It's super direct. You never get the sense that you're driving a big vehicle in here because of how light the steering is. But with that said, it's very numb. You don't feel anything transmitting from the front tires into the steering wheel, which is probably a good thing because most people that are gonna be driving this are going to want an isolated driving experience. All right, now we're going to take a look at the handling of this vehicle with stability on and the transmission in automatic mode. Brakes have really good initial bite. 
uh, the car feels heavy. Uh, I mean, this is a large crossover SUV, so you're not going to get, you know, this sense of agileness from the chassis. It, it, it just is going to feel like a lot of weight transfer all the time. The transmission, the CVT, let me just say something about CVTs. Never will you find somebody that really enjoys driving cars that will say, wow, that's a great CVT. It's just not going to happen. In the case of this car, it functions pretty well. And mostly CVTs are there for creating efficiency or fuel efficiency. The Nissan V6, typically they've been really well known for having a great sounding V6, including exhaust note. They know how to tune it. But when you put a CVT in here, the only thing I can compare it to, especially when the transmission gets in this mode where it's just holding on to revs, it sounds like a motorboat. It has that same feel and sound and drone that you get from just throwing on an outboard and keeping at it a steady idle. Now, when you get to the more upscale trim like the Platinum, there's things here that are just, well, hard to live without once you've had them. The heated and cooled seats, which actually work. You have a heated steering wheel, which in the winter is amazing. This panoramic moonroof, uh, which if the switch was working right, would be a very nice feature for most people. The infotainment, all the, the technology that's in here, including the safety features like your blind spot monitoring, your radar cruise control, all of that works with very little drama. And the 360 camera that's on the outside for parking, because this is a bigger vehicle, I really appreciate having that here. And again, when you get to this trim level, these are things that uh, you kind of expect, but also things that maybe you wouldn't either. So where do we stand with the Murano? This is gonna be a good vehicle for somebody in an urban setting. It's, it's like the near perfect suburban commuter. It's ultra comfortable. You get a lot for your money here. No, it doesn't have a luxury car ride, but it's still well dampened and you still get a little bit of sport in the steering. It's quick, it's lively. But the negative part is, yes, it's a bigger car. There's a lot of weight transfer, so you can't have too much fun. The next thing is the motor. I, I really like the Nissan V6. It's got a ton of torque. It's got a lot of pull. You get, you get going quickly. But the negative part is it's made it to this CVT, which just kind of dumbs down everything. It makes it feel slower than it really is. <laughs> When you get inside the Nissan Murano, specifically the Platinum Edition, it's pretty clear what they were trying to do here. This is going to appeal to people who don't want the stigma of carrying around a luxury brand nameplate on their car, but want 90% of what a lot of those vehicles offer. That's where this interior is at its best. There's a couple things that are important to me, and that is overall diversity and choice in materials. That's number one. Second is just overall fit and finish. And then lastly is how well do they put all of those materials together into a cohesive package where you're, you don't feel like you're inundated or they're trying too hard or just, just plain looks cheap. This car finds that balance. And I think the, the demographic of people that are looking at this vehicle are gonna appreciate some of those touches. So what about those materials? And I gotta laugh because I just started thinking about the marketing lingo that Nissan has to describe this interior space. And one of the words that they used to, or phrases was, an upscale lounge. Uh, the second thing I heard was the use of theming or the mother of pearl trim, zero gravity seats. <laughs> what does all that mean? Well, essentially, they're just trying to tart up, you know, trying to make you feel like this is a special space. But the thing is, there is attention to detail here. This silver trim that almost looks like stone breaks up the black plastics everywhere in the black leather really well. The other thing they do is they don't just stick with black leather. They use this brown leather surfaces where your arms are resting, center armrest, door armrest, your seats are brown. It, there's a lot of different mix of elements here. Also matte silver, there's chrome accents, black piano gloss plastics in here. And I think it's put together in a really tasteful way. It does feel like a luxury car. Uh, and I think most people are gonna connect with that. The next huge thing is ergonomics and accessibility. They do, they do almost everything right here. Your 
door armrest is completely padded for your elbow. Your right elbow is completely padded on the center armrest. Your surfaces by your center stack here are padded for your right knee. I mean, essentially everything is comfortable right off the bat. These seats, despite the marketing lingo, they are extremely comfortable. I could see anybody getting in here, taking a long trip and never complaining. They're that good. It's almost hard to find any serious faults in it. And a lot of this may seem like nitpicking, but here it is. The material choice for the surround of the infotainment and HVAC controls is this black, glossy plastic that they've chosen. Now there's something really negative about that. One is it always looks dirty. The second is it's a fingerprint magnet and it is so easily scratched it's ridiculous. The second thing is the black surround around the HVAC controls, the dial that you actually turn the temperature with. It's pulling away from the dash and the actual knobs that you use are getting stuck on the plastic. So when you turn them, they're really hard to turn. So I don't know if that's just something with this tester or if it's gonna be something on all the cars. That's a big deal for me. The second thing is this moonroof control. It's got a panoramic sunroof, which is gonna be great for most people. The switch doesn't work. Every time I push it, one touch does not work. So I have to sit there and hit it. 20, 30 times to get the whole thing to go back. And then when the shade is finally back, then I have to keep doing it again to move the glass back. So that's something hopefully that not all these are gonna have an issue with, but in this tester, it, it doesn't work. I said it right at the beginning of this, another important part is fit and finish. And these are two things that I've noticed right away because I'm in contact with it all the time. The door handles feel extremely flimsy. You know, you grab the, the actual door handle to open and close it and you're like, wow, this feels solid. And then you get to that little chrome door handle and it feels like it should be on a Fiat 500. It is just so flimsy. The second thing is the center storage pocket that you could probably put like your key and a couple other things. The plastic on here, the way it's spring loaded, feels like it's off of a 99 cent children's toy. I mean, you could flip this off here and probably break it off here with like a toddler hand. Uh, that's what it feels like. But these are just small areas they can improve on that I've noticed. Now in terms of Overall interior, I'm done with really nitpicking things because the best thing about this interior of the Murano is it's so comfortable. Back seats are great, front seats are great. You could literally take whoever with you and I couldn't imagine anybody complaining. The rear seats are heated. They have their own little vent control back there. Uh, there's a ton of leg room. The storage space in here is great. Cup holders are perfectly sized. The glove box is ridiculously big. I can almost fit my 17 inch laptop in there. You could probably fit a 10, in, 10 inch pizza in there and have a little pizza party too if you wanted. It's ridiculous. Infotainment. This is an area where manufacturers are fighting with each other to, to best each other. Who's got the quickest, most responsive, most attractive infotainment. And overall, this is a really good setup. I could pair, I could do voice commands on this thing super easy. The menu structure is pretty quick. It's not as responsive to multi-touch gestures as some head units are, but overall, there's nothing that you can really complain about it. It kind of just works for the most part. Yes, it relies too much on touch control, but where, you know, even there's a balance there because you have solid physical controls on the side of the head unit. You have volume knob that is not touch sensitive or capacitive. You have the physical buttons that you need, including a button to just directly turn off the screen and put it to sleep. That's a huge bonus. So in conclusion, I'm gonna say something that I really like about this Murano. Some are gonna ask, well, why wouldn't you just buy a luxury SUV? Well, let me just put it this way. Luxury brands carry a stigma for most people. If you're a middle income worker, a working class person, and you show up at your job and everybody's kind of like you, you pull in with a BMW, you instantly get that everybody talking. Wow, well, why is he this? How much money is he making? You eliminate all that with a car like this. You get almost everything that you get from a luxury SUV with all, all that fanfare. That's what I really like about this. You can drive it, it's inconspicuous, it still looks good, it gives you all the features, the comfort, everything that you want from a vehicle of that type, it just does it. And it's not gonna raise any eyebrows in a negative way. And I like that.